Defoe, and you're watching Animal Logic. Before we get into the amazing things jellyfish can do, we first need to understand what they are. For starters, they're not fish, nor jelly, as they're invertebrates, and the colloquial term jelly is more accurate, or at least less misleading. That being said, scientists go back and forth as to what a jelly is. The phylum Cnidaria has two types of body forms, the polyp and the medusa. The polyp is cylindrical, usually fixed in place and represents the asexual stage. The medusa, on the other hand, is umbrella-shaped, usually free-swimming, and represents the sexual stage. Most of what people call jellyfish are medusa. Then there are the comb jellies, or tinophora, which are in their own phylum, meaning that they're only distantly related to medusa, but are still considered to be jellies. And then there's everyone's favorite, the Portuguese man-o-war, or Phasalia phasalis, which is a cnidarian, but not a jelly. It's what's called a colonial organism. It's made up of a bunch of different organisms that work together to survive. There are a few big differences between the two major classifications of jellies, Cnidaria and Tinophora. First of all, there are way more discovered Cnidarians than Tinophores. 10,000 versus 150. If you've ever seen a jelly, chances are it was a Cnidarian. Tinophores or comb jellies don't sting, but instead, some employ sticky tentacles or oral lobes to catch their prey. They also get around very differently. Regular jellies, or nidaria, employ jet propulsion to move. They catch water under their bell and then they squeeze it out. This leads to a stop and go movement pattern, which you've probably seen if you've ever been to an aquarium or seen Finding Nemo. Comb jellies, however, use specialized comb plates to get around. Their bodies are lined with tightly packed cilia that beat in a wavy pattern that propels the jelly smoothly. Also, unlike comb jellies, Nidarian jellies have an incomplete digestive tract, meaning they only have one opening, which is both their mouth and their anus. Great! They are also super old. Jellies are believed to be the oldest living multi-organ creature in the world, having existed for more than 650 million years. Most medusa are made up of, depending on the species, 95 to 98 percent water. Their bodies are symmetrical, consisting of a large bell on top with tentacles and feeding arms coming out from the bottom. Their mouths are in the underside of their bell and they use their arms to pull in plankton and other small prey. They don't have a brain, but instead have a web of nerve receptors throughout their bodies. They also don't have a respiratory system, as their skin is thin enough to oxygenate their bodies through diffusion. Some jellies even have eyes, but most employ light-sensitive organs called ocelli that they use to distinguish up from down. They range from tiny to huge, the smallest being around 1 millimeter long, and the longest being 36.5 meters or 120 feet long. In the tentacles of a medusa, they have what's called nematocysts, which are basically microscopic hypodermic needles that inject their prey with venom. Depending on the species, they can have around 800,000 nematocysts per square centimeter, and it only takes them 10 milliseconds to sting. Many jellyfish can reproduce sexually and asexually, and most jellyfish are hermaphrodites, meaning they can either be male or female, depending on need. They live all over the world. Salt water, fresh water, cold, tropical, shallow and deep. And no matter where they are, they're totally amazing. The box jellyfish, Chironex flecari, is considered to be one of the, if not the, most venomous creatures in the ocean. Their sting is deadly to humans if not treated immediately. And if you do get treated, you'll have to live with the scars for the rest of your life. The immortal jellyfish, or Turritopsis dornii, is my personal favorite. Called the Benjamin Button of the Deep, this jelly can transform from adult to baby over and over again, essentially making it immortal. Instead of dying, over a period of three days, it turns into a blob-like cyst and then develops into a polyp colony, the first stage of a jelly's life. The entire composition of the jelly is transformed in the process. Muscle cells can become nerve cells, or sperms, or eggs, or anything. They only activate the process when they're sick or injured, and they can still die when they're squashed or eaten. But still, 
So cool! Crespetacusta suburbii is a Chinese freshwater jelly that has now become an invasive species throughout the world. They've even been found here in Canada, throughout our rivers and lakes, and in cottage country. But that's not the coolest lake jelly. That prize is held for the golden jelly, which can be found in Jellyfish Lake in Palau. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, these jellies were isolated in the lake and are an excellent example of evolution. Since there's no plankton or similar prey to eat, they've developed a new way to eat. Photosynthesis. That's right. Inside the jellies are thousands of single-cell algae-like organisms called zooxanthellae that generate glucose via photosynthesis. This feeds their host, and the host jelly provides them with some of the generated energy in a symbiotic relationship. There's also a myth that they've lost their sting due to living in a predator-free lake. But in reality, their sting is just incredibly mild and virtually undetectable. The lion's mane jellyfish is usually called the largest jellyfish. It reportedly can, but not often, reach up to 120 feet in length. But that's mostly tentacle. Nomura's jellyfish, or Nemopolema nomurai, would be another good candidate, as they can weigh in at up to 450 pounds or 204 kilos. Comb jellies have a feature I didn't talk about earlier. They're virtually the disco parties of the sea. Their comb plates light up using bioluminescence and are simply mesmerizing. Some comb jellies use it for communication or self-defense. They'll light up to startle a predator that's closing in, and then they'll shoot out bioluminescent particles that diffuse their shape in the dark abyss, confusing their attacker and giving them a chance to flee. The not-jelly, not-fish Portuguese man -o -war, or also known as the blue bottle jelly, is also pretty fascinating. Like I mentioned before, they're a colonial organism made up of different polyps that all serve specific purposes. They can't dive, but rather cruise the ocean with a gas-filled sail, catching prey just below the surface using long tentacles equipped with a deadly venom. The only things standing in their way are the few awesome creatures that have adapted to be immune to their venom and are now using it to wreak havoc across the ocean. And I could go on, believe me, but that's another video. So what animals should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. Thank you for watching. Blop, 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 blop.